Hola mis queridos, como estas mi amor Alicia? Hello my kittens, how are you? My name is Allison, and today we are playing ne Nancy Drew Mobile Mysteries Ghost of Thornton Hall. And yes, I said Mobile Mysteries. If you are actually wondering, <laughs> Her Interactive did indeed make a mobile game of Ghost of Thornton Hall. And we are basically on the ninth video of the playlist <laughs> of this play. And this is basically uh, our first gameplay of the mobile mysteries, of the mobile version. If you're actually wondering where you can find the uh, PC slash Mac version, you can find that on my channel. I do have a separate playlist for that. I have already played it on my channel. <laughs> you can go ahead and check that out. But if you're actually wondering, like, what the kind of... If you're actually needing help on the mobile mysteries version you are you found the correct place <laughs> so I would go into the spiel of what the differences what the differences are between the mobile mysteries versus the computer game but there's like so many different nuances but just because they're including stuff from the bonus edition as well so I, I mean I really do want to go into details but I've been doing a lot of talk. I've noticed I've been doing a lot of talking in the intros, just focusing on the differences. That I kind of need to stop doing that. So, if you are actually wondering what the differences are, please go ahead and check the previous videos of Go the Mobile Mysteries Ghost of Thornton Hall. And I am going to go ahead and talk about, uh, or not talk about, but mention that with every Nancy Drew game that you start. Um, of course, I can't show you here because I would have to reset the entire gameplay. But with every Nancy Drew game, you, when you start a new game, you get a choice of two different detective levels, skill levels. There's amateur and then there's master. And there's like a whole different list of what the differences are. You can actually check all of the other Nancy Drew games that I played where I actually explain what the differences are. And they actually change with Ghost of Thorn Hall just because her interactive likes to update their game engine every so often but considering this is a mobile mysteries it's a little bit different um but I mean we still have at least one feature that we can or no two features that we can at least use the third one I don't think we can use uh because I know I know the features are uh the hint system that is connected to our <laughs> task list which is and it's also connected to one of the achievements that we are actually able to get which I can show you in the awards and it is this one the spoiler free achievement I'm not gonna go I'm uh, I'm not gonna go for the spoiler free achievement just because I know I'm gonna have trouble with this game just on mobile on the mobile version I've already been having trouble with it just because there are so many different uh, glitches as well as crashes and the crashes are happening because well her interactive kind of made a bad choice of using Ghost of Thornton Hall for mobile mysteries basically because <laughs> whenever uh, Ghost of Thornton Hall basically has like a whole bunch of different hauntings for you to see and it's and they're kind of important to the story so it's pretty they're not scary but they're pretty but they're pretty daunting enough that you need to watch them on PC or Mac but for the mobile version like you get like a little black screen up of like a little flicker of the screen before the haunting actually happens and when that happens the the mobile device is basically saying oh this is not supposed to be happening I can't have this program running and soon after the program just crashes so if ever the program if ever this game crashes I actually do know the alternative of how to get the game back open and there are times where well I actually can't get back to can't get past to past a certain point uh, when trying to get back to the game because of the crash and that is because um, it, that is because it's basically a glitch, you know, of not just 
the game itself, but just like recording it, you know. It won't let you record the game. It won't let you record the program as far as when it comes to a certain point of it, you know. Anywho, <laughs> I do want to mention that uh, this mobile game requires iOS 7 or later, and you do get at least an hour's worth of gameplay for free. After that, you do have to pay a fee, which is $5.99. Well, fee, more like you're purchasing the game. And it is compatible with iPads, which is how I'm able to record it, because I mainly play all my games on I, uh, my mobile games on iPads, um, on my iPad. Trying to play any game on my mobile phone is just. Bleh. <laughs> And I do want to mention that Her Interactive bases all of their Nancy Drew video games, well, almost all of their Nancy Drew video games, off the Nancy Drew book series. And that book series has been going on since 1930, <laughs> I think, in about nine years. It'll be a hundred years since they started the series. Boy. <laughs> but uh, there have been two companies so far that have owned the whole franchise of Nancy Drew, the book series at least. The first one was, was Grosset and Dunlap, and now it is Simon & Schuster. Each company actually tended to tend to reset the series every so often, not just to put in better grammar, better punctuation, but also to like revise them, as well as, <laughs> as, well as put in new stories, basically to draw in not just more readers, but to get their fans be more interested in getting their books, buying their books. So it's actually a pretty good method. But what's interesting is that with every reset is that they have to come up with a different binding color, uh, different cover arts, and uh, sometimes because of the different binding color, or because the binding color is similar to the other one, they actually kind of rename the series a little bit at least the underneath the Nancy Drew name so that people know the difference of each binding and so that people know the dif and so that people know that the series is not entirely canon. <laughs> Oi. So Ghost of Thornton Hall is based off the book uh Girl Nancy Drew Girl Detective on Civil Acts. I actually have read this book Although I have not read it recently, I keep forgetting that I need to read this. I, a lot has been going on lately. <laughs> I'm actually trying to... Uh, you know what, I'll mention that in the outro. Uh, anywho, Uncivil Acts is actually a really good book, and I'm not going to go into full detail about it. I will also bring uh, talk more about the book in the outro as well. But there is a way for you to get a copy of this book yourself, where you don't actually have to go to your public library. Pretty swickin, pretty swick. Can't believe I just used that word, despite the fact that I really don't like that word. <laughs> ah, curse you, Captain Sparkles. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think that is it as far as uh, introducing you all to the game as well as the book. So, I think the last thing I'm going to mention is that, if anything, anything in this video does not look familiar, it is because you have not been keep keeping up, please, please, please check the description box below. There's a previous video as well as the playlist. I recommend the play playlist because it will have everything that I've done so far with Nancy Drew, Mobile Mysteries, Ghost of Thorn Hall, and let's go ahead and get into it. Alrighty, dighty. So, uh, what the heck is going on? There we go. Okay. So I believe in the previous video we actually finished the cotton gin and there was actually a glitch going on with it um, because we couldn't get the seeds out of there, uh, out of this little doohickey, out of this little doohickey that's on the right side of the screen underneath the words cotton gin. And there it is. We get the little hint from the game saying we can use a spark hint throughout the series, throughout throughout the game. This will help you locate areas or objects of importance. Look for them whenever you feel lost or or are searching for objects that are hard to spot. You can actually use the compass that's here between the inventory and the task list. 
it'll tell you all the different uh, spots that you can touch on the screen for you to leave, which is pretty cool. It doesn't tell you what uh, what like areas you can touch. It just tells you the different uh, locations of the game you can go to, which is interesting because I know we can go to this over here, even though it says we can go over here. It's weird. <laughs> anyway, let's go through the task list real quick. And here we are getting the information about the hint system, getting organized. Oh, the second feature that I was trying to bring up was the fast combo feature. And hopefully we'll be able to see that soon. Because I do know that we need to be talking to someone. Oh, wait, no. In this video, we're just going to be finding the access point for the seller as well as figuring out the password for Jessalyn's phone. So getting organized, the task list tracks your object, uh, your objectives. To mark a task done, tap on the checkbox. Tapping the question mark gives you a hint for that task. The journal keeps notes of observations relevant to the case. And that's this journal right here. You can touch observations or suspects. <laughs> Me being a dum-dum, I couldn't figure out how to find Harper's name and did not touch suspects until I actually noticed it. <laughs> okay, so task list. Haven't done that. Haven't All done right. that. Still have to do. Can't check that. That's done. Haven't done that. Um, and we did find cotton check. seeds. Still have to check. We did fix the cotton gin. I actually really like. It's weird because I've actually uh have seen other people on the internet on YouTube play this game and they say they don't like the feature of that the finished task goes to the bottom of the playlist. I actually really like it. Personally, I really like it just because it doesn't, like, it doesn't make a mess of, like, where I have to go through the entire list of, like, what do I have done? What do I need to do? Like, that was one of my problems when playing some of the earlier games, like Danger on Deception Island. Uh, no, not Danger on, well, not just Danger on Deception Island. I think it was also, um... Haunted Carousel. Yeah, I think it was more Haunted Carousel than it was uh, Days Around Deception Island. Anyway. Uh, let us... I think... I have to find a way to balance these scales. Yeah, using these seeds. And the reason why she's saying balance the scales is because of this little thing here. Cotton Gin gets seeds, balance the scales. We actually... I actually had trouble finding all the portraits. Uh... Uh, just because, you know, glitches with the game. Also because I can be a dum-dum sometimes. <laughs> but we were able to find everything, and we had to mix, move the letters around, because it, it was all in anagrams. But con gene, get seeds, balance skills. We basically have to balance everything uh, to... So, basically... Say, okay, so that's 12. Uh, on this side, let's make it... That's 5 so far. 10. 11. 12. Okay. Did I not... There we go. Okay, so now we have 18 on the right side. So let's see. 8 plus 5, that is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. If we add another 5 over there. That would be 18. Then we still have one left over. And we have to use all of the seeds. Huh. Come on. What if I did this here?
Hmm. And I'll look at the valve. This is interesting. Um, okay, so let's... I think we basically have to do 18 over here. Uh, what if we did this here? So that's 12 so far. Uh, 12 plus 5, that's 17. Oh my gosh, that's it. There we go. Booyah. We now have access... Um, that looks new. It might be Jessalyn's. Definitely. Ooh, is that a Coco Crinkle? Yes, Coco Kringle. These are. This is basically a chocolate brand that Sunny June is obsessed with. And if you're not familiar with Sunny June, you you are not a Nancy Drew fan. He's basically a recurring character ever since Game Number Six, Secret of the Scarlet Hand. You would understand. <laughs> you sorry, you would understand. Uh, I sometimes mumble my words. We're gonna eat that, steal her food. What the heck is this? Wedding notes? Interesting. You know my mom and you know me. So when you look over this list, don't forget the crazy requests are not mine. My one request is that you show up and wear a suit. <laughs> what follows is a list of demands for Mon High. Also, tell your mom that I'm fine doing whatever, but she's got to go toe to toe with my mom, shouts, uh, or about any changes. She will, trust me. Let's just try not to be near that. So, here goes. Your groomsmen. No beards or piercing or tattoos, and they should all be wearing the exact same shade of black. Yikes. That's... That's just... That's just a bit prejudiced, don't you think? That is just not going to happen, since I made the mistake of having friends with personalities. <laughs> nice one. No wedding DJ. It has to be a band and not Brian's band. No one likes wedding DJs. I already told Brian his band could play. They'll behave this time. I'll make sure of it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Table cards. Go talk to my mom about this. She'll make you pick out which ones you like. Pick the second set she shows you. If you pick the first or last, she'll assume you weren't paying attention. It doesn't matter what you pick, but I doubt that you care. Do not care at all. My mom wants to mix all the guests up at the wedding so people mingle. It is up to you to stop that from happening. No one likes that because it is a stupid idea. Not looking forward to that. <laughs> She's going to try to get you to force me to uninvite a few of my friends. Obviously not going to. When she tries, just say I'll try, but you know how Jess gets. Why can't you deal with, with this yourself? Why all this stuff about your mom? She does realize I'm not marrying her, right? Yeah, freaking good question. Alright. Oh my gosh, the menu. She spelt dessert wrong. <laughs> uh, look at all these weird menu items. Chilled strawberry soup and balsamic clouded etched ice ramekin? I don't know. I kind of want to try that last one. It sounds weird, but it, at the same time, it sounds good. Balsamic clouded edged ice. Did you hire one of those molecular gastronomy guys? Right? Yeah. This sounds like Project uh, MC Squared. Dude, I want to watch that again. Why not fried chicken and cheese, cheesy shrimp grits or mac and cheese? That what, that's what everyone's going to want. Why make everyone eat food that requires appreciation? Shouldn't this be fun? Yes, please. Can I marry this guy? <laughs> Brioche and dark chocolate pudding served with white pepper ice cream. Wait, white pepper ice cream is a thing? Multi-tiered whites on white cake with fresh berries. Dude, yeah, totally prejudice. Totally prejudice. Perception caterer's choice of bar snacks. Oh, gosh. 
We need to reserve a block of rooms for the wedding. My mom will provide you a list of the things she'll want with regard to the rooms. No, just one list. The list can't have one, an item that is another list. Is wedding prep a stress test to see if you really want to get married? Kinda, yeah. Is that what this is? Because that has to be what this is. <laughs> this poor guy. Alright, what is this? Family tree. Hmm, might come in handy. Definitely will. Oh my freaking gosh. Yeah, look, there's a question mark right next to Rosalie. No one knows who Clara's father is. Holy freaking heck. Sorry, Gabba heck. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. We're talking. Ooh, is that a key? Yes, please. Key part. Oh, dang. It's not the whole key. And nothing but the key. Um, can we please? Oh, hi. So, yeah. Let's just say hi to her just real quick, and then we're going to head out. Spin me around, right, round, right, round. While exploring, you will enter areas where you can turn around 360 degrees. These areas will be indicated by the uh, arrows at the top of the screen. To move around these areas, simply swipe your finger left or right to turn your view. Whee! Whee! Ooh, barrels. Oh, this looks cool. Oh, this definitely looks like a puzzle. Whee! Is that a freaking bike handle? What the heck? That looks like a generator. Hello, Harper. Quick, I haven't got all day. Can you tell me a little more about Clara? I could, but as a lover of the written word, I prefer show, not tell. So why don't you go ask her about her daddy? This house is pretty run down. Are you sure it's safe to use that furnace? No. Maybe you should not use it? You could be filling the house with fumes. Sounds like upstairs people problems to me. I'm downstairs people. What do you think of Wade? The Wade man of Alcatraz. Don't trust him about a single thing in this living world. The world of the dead, he understands that. Okay, so I do want to mention, see those little uh, yellow arrows next to the box? That's basically the fast forward feature. Basically what you can do is, while they are talking, whether it's Nancy or the person she is talking to, you can touch that and it'll skip the dialogue that they are on. With, uh, and sometimes, with this being a mobile mysteries, you can act you can actually accidentally do this. I think I did once or twice already. <laughs> uh, and I do believe um, people, you are welcome to use this either on the Mobile Mysteries or even on your PC or Mac version. This actually helps you whether you want to just skip the story and do the puzzles or if you tr want to try to do a speed run. It's pretty fun actually. So I'm actually kind of done talking to her. Let's just go ahead and say goodbye. goodbye. Go leave. Go leave. Bye. Oh. Whoop. And stop that. Okay. Uh, yeah, look at that. This, this is definitely a puzzle. I think we're going to be making a wheelbarrow at some point in the game. I do not know when. I think. Oh, yeah, here it is. Charlotte's cryptic obsession with Jackson was indeed grave. Was she in search of something lost or lost in the search itself? And who was this Jackson? They say dead men tell no tales, but that isn't true now, is it? No. That phrase itself came from a man who is now dead and still telling tales and letting his thoughts go traveling through humanity like hitchhikers patiently waiting to get to the next town. Who is Jackson indeed? What's he hiding and who put it there? Was it Charlotte? What the heck is that on about? Okay, so we are actually going to head out. Um, let's look at this real quick. And I think... Um, I am going to go over here. Oh, hi there. 
I think this book over here tells us who Nana was, right? Or was it this? It was this book. Um, so it was Sarah Thornton. Or Sarah... Just, yeah, I think it is Sarah Thornton. Um, and they called her Nina. Alright. If that's the case, I am going to try to find her grave, and then I think we're going to head out, because I am noticing the time, and I am, do know that I'm going to be talking quite a bit in the outro. So. Oh, hello, Wade. Um. Harper Stone. Oh, yeah. Hi. Harper. Indeed. She ran away shortly after Charlotte died. Long enough that we thought we'd lost her, too. <laughs> One day she walked in the front door looking wild and thin as a spring sapling. Never said where she was. Her granddaddy was so mad he left a stone to remind her of what she'd put them through. She'd sit out yeah, there and enough. read. Don't know if it was spite or if it made her feel at home. Knowing her, probably both. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Why is that? Well, who doesn't want a celebrity in the family? Interesting. Especially one that rubs all the wrong people the wrong way. The Grey Lady. In the Civil War, they say she was a spy, passing oh. codes for the North. If you look, you can find some of her contraptions here. Her service gave the Thornton family this land. Interesting. And I think we read more about that later. Um that there is Clara's mother. Oh, dang it. What we keep finding about graves it? that he, great we haven't deal. visited yet. She loved her secrets. Never even told Clara who her daddy was. Why not? Don't know. When Clara was about ten, Rosalie got real sick. Every day Clara would ask about her daddy. I think she was afraid of being left to fend for herself. But Rosalie wouldn't say. Interesting. Ruby Newton, no. Um, here we go. But this is where we are going to stop. Okay. So, but that was basically that, that. Uh, epitaph right there that gravestone is basically where we're going to start with the epitaph hunt in the next video man we just do not have enough time i i try to make sure that the videos are at least 30 minutes i don't i'm slow <laughs> plus i mean we were visiting graves that we hadn't visited yet so i do want to mention though when Harper said that uh, the fumes sounded like an upstairs people thing and not uh, a downstairs people thing, she actually has that wrong. It's both. Because she those, those fumes are basically carbon monoxide. <laughs> and that affects everyone in that house, not just upstairs, you know? And she is basically at the source of it. So she would have like a pretty heavy dose of the carbon monoxide in her own lungs, which is pretty dangerous. Um, and yeah, we're going to go over 30 minutes, which is fine. But ju I just want to let you all know that do not take carbon monoxide poisoning lightly. If ever, ever, ever you experience any of the symptoms, please call the proper authorities. Do not wait a moment longer. And it's crazy because the... The uh, symptoms, the side effects of carbon monoxide poisoning, has like a huge list. It's like a, it's like a huge list, and so, so like you never know. I don't want to alarm you just because it, just having these symptoms, it could be anything really. But if anything, you have a combination of these, just be aware that it might be carbon monoxide poisoning. 
just pay attention to your uh, carbon monoxide meter if you have one in your house or apartment and if you don't have one have someone have find find someone who works for the city to install one for you just so you, that you know <laughs> what's going on in your own uh, location so the symptoms are dull headache weakness <laughs> dizziness nausea and or vomiting shortness of breath confusion blurred vision loss of consciousness chest pain fainting hyperactivity impaired judgment shock low blood pressure and rapid and or ra abnormal heartbeats Nancy has already experienced at least one or two of these things already which is pretty fr uh, pretty frightening <laughs> especially since she's already seen at least one or two hallucinations especially when it comes to the hauntings the hauntings every, everyone calls them hauntings they're not hauntings they're freaking hallucinations it's it's so sad <laughs> It is dangerous when you when you realize you are seeing these hauntings. So if ever you are seeing a haunting and you don't know like where you are or anything like that, please remember that it might not be an actual haunting. <laughs> it might be a hallucination and you might have carbon monoxide poisoning. I'm not trying to make you panic. I'm just trying to make sure that you are aware of this situation of what you of what can happen <laughs> I do apologize if I am making you panic I apologize mm. all right so now that I've talked plenty of that now let's talk about the book Nancy Drew girl detective uncivil acts now as I said at the beginning of the video I have actually read this it's been years though I am going to try to get myself to read this at, uh, this weekend, hopefully. If not, I will personally slap myself silly. <laughs> okay, so uh, the book itself came out in 2005, uh, which is pretty interesting because I do know the um, this mobile game came out in 2014. That will definitely give you a hint as to like when the PC slash Mac version came out. It's pretty incredible how fast her interactive can work. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm actually going to read the description as since I do not remember most of the book. So, here we go. A Civil War reenactment should be fun, right? Not in our town. It feels like war fever's taken over. The tension started to build when we all chose sides. Confederates and Union sympathizers never did mix. And if that wasn't enough to heat things up, someone started to secretly dig large holes in the battlefield. Pretty odd, and very suspicious. Is someone waging a little war of their own and trying to cheat? And if so, the bigger question is why? So you might actually be wondering why this sounds, why the description of the book sounds a little bit weird. And let me tell you why. It is because the entire series, the entire series for the Nancy Drew Girl Detective Finding it is all in first person narration. Pretty freaking awesome in my opinion. <laughs> Cause as far as I know, I have not read any of the comics or any of the uh the the clue crew, the the ones that are actually written for the kids younger than ten, I think. I have not read those books. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> but basically the, this is the only binding that I have read so far where it's in first person narration and I actually really like it just because I get to personally see what Nietzsche's thought process is like and how she actually works with each case and really how she communicates with her friends her family like the relationships with her with everyone is just really interesting not to mention her hometown you actually get to explore her hometown a little more which is pretty cool i think that's how uh her interactive was able to make river heights for the specific game alibi and ashes if i'm correct because i know alibi and ashes was set in river heights nancy's hometown <laughs> pretty freaking awesome <laughs> and i just it's so fun I think my personal favorites of the Nancy Drew Girl Detective series, The Binding, would be Big Times Bad Crimes. I think that's the title of it. And that's basically Nancy falling asleep and going back in time. 
I'm not gonna explain all the details of it, but it's freaking twisted how everything just like pours out. I just, I don't know how to fully explain it just because it is my kind of book. Not just because of time travel, but because of the complexity of it. Uh, I would write something like that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I think I've been talking enough as, about this as it is. Of course, I do probably should mention, I probably should mention how you can get a free, how you can get a copy yourself and it would be free. You do not actually have to go to your public library, get out of your own comfort zone, out of your location just to get the copy. <laughs> you can get Unsimple Acts at a website that is connected to a business called Internet Archives. There's archive.org as well as openlibrary.org. Openlibrary.org is more of a li an actual library database that you can go through. It has basically every single Nancy Drew book you can think of, and not to mention like cookbooks and this, all different kinds of books really. Whereas archive.org basically has like mega datas, um, audiobooks, textbooks, uh, and multiple libraries that you can visit, not just from around the country, but from around the world as well. It's really cool. <laughs> In my opinion, like, archive.org is pretty close to the Library of Congress. It's insane. <laughs> it is huge. Oh my gosh. But you can get a free copy of the book yourself, and you are actually, like, and I do mean free, because the only thing you need to do to get an account on the website is basically giving them your your email address and then creating your own password. After that, you are actually able to borrow at least 10 books at a time. You can choose either an hour to borrow or two weeks. That's 14 days. Freaking awesome! <laughs> Freaking awesome. I love it. <laughs> Oh man, I just, I, I praise this website, just this business way too much. I'm telling you, I, I'm not sponsored by this. I praise this website way too much. Oh, but yeah, you, you're able to borrow the books, at least 10 books, either an hour at a time or 14 days, which is pretty awesome. And I will actually put a link of Unsimple Acts in the description box below for you to check it out, for you to read. Heck yeah, and I do believe I've been talking long enough as it is, so I'm going to go ahead and bid you all adieu. I hope I helped you out at least a little bit in this video. If not, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy this video as much as I did. If so, smash that like button like a kitten would. And if you're just now tuning into this channel and you're not subscribed, go ahead and click, click, click that ugly red subscribe button making that beautiful gray, as well as that bell icon right next to it. That'll know value of all the videos that I do, which are on Wednesdays, 6 p.m. Central, and Sundays, 4.30 p.m. Central. I hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world. I am Sweet Press the Rabbit, saying goodbye. Stay awesome, and stay on YouTube! Wow. Man, my throat is parched. Well, that's right, my game. Which one was it? Oh, yeah, Klondike. Oh, right, stop recording. <laughs>